So here I have a really obfuscated first stage downloader script related to GooLoader and I'm going to show you how you can decode it to extract out a PowerShell command and then I'm going to take that PowerShell command and walk over the, the obfuscation mechanism and show you how to pull the URL of the second stage payload. So looking at this code, the first thing that stands out are these junk comments full of random text. If I'm looking through the code, I can see calls with this chatter function. This chatter function seems to be taking pieces of more code and doing something with that. If I scroll down to the bottom of the code where the chatter function is defined. We can see that it's only only actually one line of real code between the definition and the end. And that one line seems to be taking the input and it's adding that to a variable which is then returned. Potentially that function is just adding all of the strings together which are contained in these chatters. As a way of cleaning up this code, I'm gonna go ahead and use a find and replace with regex enabled to remove any comments. So to remove these comments, I'm going to specify a single quote. I'm going to say I want to grab everything after that with a dot all, also known as a dot asterisk. And then I'm going to say I want to remove the new line that comes at the end. So I'm going to specify that with backslash n. And now this may cause issues where there is a single quote contained within something that is legitimate code. So I only want to remove single quotes that occur at the beginning of a line. So I'm going to add a caret here. And that says if we want to grab all of this, it has to be at the start. So that looks like it's highlighting correctly and matching as intended. So I'm going to go ahead and do a replace all. And straight away the code is much, much more readable and doesn't have all of those junk comments. It's now much easier to see these chatter functions and to look at the code that is contained within. And if we look closely, we can see what looks to be pieces of potentially a PowerShell script. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of the code again and look at that chatter function, we can see more clearly that it's just taking in a single argument and then adding it onto a variable called S2. So rather than reverse the rest of the code, I'm just gonna test that theory. And I'm going to test that by using Cyberchef and another regex to try and extract out the lines containing chatter. So to do that, I'm going to use the regular expression function of Cyberchef. And I want to grab all lines containing chatter. I want to grab a single round bracket after that. And I want to grab the round bracket at the end. We can see that there's a double quote at the beginning and end of each of the embedded text. So I'm going to go ahead and specify that. And I also want to grab everything in between, which is not a double quote. So I'm going to go square brackets. I'm going to add a caret, which says not. And I'm going to add another quote. What that will do is it will grab chatter, followed by a round bracket, followed by a quote, and it will grab anything that is not a quote, followed by a quote, followed by another bracket. And I also want to specify that one or more characters, which is not a double quote in between. And if we look closely here, we can see that that's matching as intended. If I change this output format to list matches, we can see all of the calls to the chatter function. What I really want is what's in between these double quotes. So I'm going to modify the content in between these two into a capture group. And I can modify that to a capture group by adding two round brackets, which are not escaped. Now that I've added that, I can change the list matches to list capture groups. And now we will have just a list of all of the encoder text. Now all of this text is on its own line, which I don't want. So I'm going to do a remove white space. And all I want to remove are the line feeds and carriage returns. Now, once I've applied that remove white space, I can see all of the text, which was contained in these chatter functions in one nice script. Now I've copied that into a new text editor window. And straight away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this highlighting to PowerShell because it looks a little bit like PowerShell to me. And it looks like that is highlighted correctly. So what I'm going to do is turn on word wrap and see if it looks good. And it does. So now that the output looks like code, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add some new lines just to make it more readable. The first thing that stands out in this new script is this obfuscated text, which seems to be being passed to this deprog function. And we can see this spread out in quite a few places throughout the code. So what I will do is I'll highlight this deprog and I'll try to see where it's defined and I can see that it's defined here. So I'm going to add a little bit more white space just to make it more readable and I'm going to try and work out what it does. And the first thing we can notice is that all of the variable names are obfuscated with random strings. So I'm going to go ahead and start renaming some of those to something easier to understand. And the first one of these is the first argument to the deprog function, which is this name right here. I'm going to go ahead and rename that to arg1. 
I can also see that this variable is assigned to the number eight. So I'm gonna rename that to eight. And I'm gonna take a guess and say that this string here is the letter S and is being used to create the substring string. So I'm gonna change that to letter S. Since this is probably gonna say substring, I'm gonna rename this to substring. This variable here looks like the return value, which is probably the output of the function. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that, do a control H, find and replace, and I'm gonna rename that to output. This variable here is contained inside of a for loop and looks like it's some kind of counter. So I'm gonna rename that to counter. This variable here looks like it's taking a substring of length one from the input argument. So I'm gonna say this is a, maybe a single character. So I'm gonna go ahead and name that character. And now the code just makes a lot more sense. I can see that this scruple variable appears to be the maximum value that the for loop will hit. So I'm gonna assume this is some kind of length and I'm gonna go ahead and rename that to len of arg1. Now, if we look at this deprog function, it seems to be taking a single argument. It is taking the length of that argument and it's starting from an offset of seven and then iterating up until the end of the input. And each time it iterates, it adds the number eight. And once it does that, it takes a single character using the substring and a length of one, and it's adding that to some kind of output. So just based on what we have here, it appears to be taking every seventh or eighth character in each of these strings being passed to the deprog function. I can test this theory by taking one of the strings, spinning up a new text editor window, turn on word wrap, and I can use a find and replace to capture every eighth character. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I wanna turn that eighth character into a capture group. So these eight dots will capture every sequence of eight characters. And this capture group here will keep the eighth character, which we can access using the dollar sign one. This is just standard regular expression notation. That looks good. So I'm gonna do a replace all. Immediately we can see this transferring string. If we go back to the script and take another value, we can try this again with the new obfuscated string. Again, using eight characters, a capture group, and a dollar sign one. If we hit replace all, we can see what looks like a URL to a potential next stage file. I don't want to do this for every individual string, so I'm going to go back into Cyberchef. So I've moved the script into Cyberchef, and in the input window, we can see all of these calls to that deprog function. And what I'm going to do is use another regular expression. I can capture the obfuscated text by typing in deprog to capture all the calls to the deprog function. I want to specify a space and then I want to specify a single quote followed by anything that is not a single quote followed by another single quote. And leaving the default of highlight matches, we can see that this is matching exactly as intended. I don't want to include the name of the deprog, so I'm gonna change the inside of these quotes into a capture group. And then I wanna change this output from list matches to list capture groups. This will display only the obfuscated text in the output window. Now, what I wanna do is apply a fork operation. This will tell Cyberchef to act on each of the captured groups independently. And this becomes a little bit more clear if we add a new line between each of the strings. Now what I can do is add a find and replace, use the same technique as before with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then converting the eight character into a capture group and telling Cyberchef to replace those eight characters with the captured value. Now I can see all of these obfuscated strings in the deobfuscated format. I can see a reference to what looks like a URL. I can see a reference to start bits transfer. I can see a reference to the app data folder, which might be where the malware is saving the file. More references to bits transfer. And we can see that it's getting the content, decoding it from base64, turning it into a string, and then grabbing an offset, starting from this number here. And very likely, given this IEX reference, this downloaded content is probably another PowerShell script. So now we know what this particular malware script is doing and we know where it's getting it from, which is this address right here, lacompile.fr, potentially a WordPress site because of this WP includes.